Welcome back. We're discussing the implications of government bailouts and solving the global economic crisis. Here with me on the set, I'm joined by Alexander Mirchev, founder and president of Kral Corporation and a former leading figure in Bulgaria during its transition from the Soviet era. Dr. Mirchev is also a member of the Board of Trustees of the Kissinger Institute on China and the United States at the Woodrow Wilson International Center. Now, just before the, uh, the break, we were uh, doing a debate in the chat room with a poll asking, should governments bail out banks? And the result is 33% of you said, yes, they should, while 67%, two-thirds of you, said, no, they shouldn't. Now, as we get back to our discussions, Dr. Mirchev, how do you regard that? Are people angry, basically, with the bailout concept? Well, they should be, uh, they are rightfully angry. You know, it doesn't make sense from... Uh, uh, anybody's point of view but sometimes the people that the, the things that do not make sense needs to be done and uh, uh, in general uh, the bailouts as they are they are rewarding failure they are rewarding they are really uh, I would say uh, out of the main street uh, way of thinking out of the entrepreneurial way of thinking and at the end of the day the government is uh, picking uh, and choosing uh, winners and losers uh, but having said so Obvious what it, it's obvious what is the rationale uh, behind the bailing out. Really, something that we have discussed, the D word, depression, the enormous domino effect that could start uh, from uh, allowing some of these organizations to fail. Okay, yeah, exactly. This, what would be the consequences? If you say, well, it's really true, free market capitalism, we could let uh, the auto industry collapse, we could let AIG fail, we could let, you know, I mean, Lehman Brothers was allowed to go, and, and now people are wondering, was it the right thing? It was like almost selected... Uh, uh, a selected decision-making uh, process? It is uh, really a very hard question uh, to the extent that uh, on one hand the general population wants to see the political leaders doing something and they have a limited set of tools to do uh, certain fiscal policies, certain monetary policies that has more or less uh, been uh, exhausted and put in place but uh, having said so at the end of the day uh, the bailout is definitely not the best uh, possible way to go uh, th but the big question is what else? What right. else is on the table? Uh, and uh, as in general, we are all human beings and we want to have the both sides uh, to eat the, the pie and to have it. Right. It's not possible to save the system and to move toward the fixing the failures of the system and after that reforming it uh, uh, without measures of a type that are going to look and actually are absurd from a free market perspective. We've got Shokat on the line from the UK. Shokat, what would you like to ask? Yeah, hello, Islam alaikum. Welcome, Islam. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask: um, the strength of the uh, Western economy uh, lies on the uh, middle class, um, small businesses. Uh, is that where the f uh, um, the solution of the economic crisis uh, lies? Thank small you, businesses and uh, the middle classes. Is that, are they going to pull us out of this recession, or this depression, even? I think yes. At the end of the day, what counts and what all these measures should lead? What is the what is the the test? What is the criteria of success for all these measures? If it increases productivity, entrepreneurship, if it increases trade, if it increases the freedom and the opportunities of people to create wealth, it's not going to be created by the governments. It never does. The governments at best are redistributing uh, the, the stuff that we're creating. Uh, so, of course, the, the medium small size businesses, the corporation, the markets uh, needs to have a say. And before they get involved in all this, in a consistent, persistent, and uh, I would say uh, dominant way, we're going to be uh, into the crisis or semi-crisis. Now, of course, a big fear is, is the number of people going out of work, and it's, it's, a, it's a major issue. It's a morale uh, crusher as well. Uh, Juan Samavia of the uh, International Labor Organization, the Director General, had this to say recently. Uh, he said, if stimulus uh, efforts are delayed, the jobs crisis will be prolonged and severe, and employment may only start to recover from as from 2011. He's, he's saying that there are 90 million jobs needed to be created. Is that a realistic proposal in, in this I current I think climate? that the actual situation is even more dire. We are about to see and we are seeing a major restructuring of the world economy, uh, of the financial system, and uh, it's not going to be that soon. So when people say, you know, these latest analysts say we, we should see recovery by the end of the year? Well, you could say whatever you want. Uh, and you should do that because it's a confidence booster and yeah. this gives a lot of uh, other... Uh, but uh, we should be cautiously realistic uh, with uh, these numbers. It is a major adjustment. It's still not a depression. And it's likely it's not going to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to take a while. As President Obama just mentioned the segment that you've said, this crisis was in the making in the course of the last significant period of time. Why on earth uh, it would be possible to fix it for a couple of quarters? Right. So what should the G20 be focusing on when it meets? 
uh, they have a pretty broad agenda, but uh, the, 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 the real problem, I think, uh, there, and there's a lot of good things that are going to come out of this uh, meeting, is... Uh, You're optimistic, then? No. Uh, I'm, I believe that it's important, that it's going to contribute. The most important single factor is a G20, but not G7, G8. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is extremely important because it's broadening the, the perspective, the way uh, the, the economy is perceived, the way the players are perceived. But at the end of the day, uh, there are really significant differences, uh, philosophical differences, how this uh, uh, should go, to what extent these uh, uh, packages that are undertaken in virtually every country could be rearranged in a way to reinforce themselves. To, so to, to increase the, 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 the level of impact that they would have on the economies, on the life of the peoples. But at the end of the day, they are going to focus on jobs, on beefing up uh, IMF, and obviously trying to regulate uh, the financial system. And here is actually the biggest problem that I uh, would like to stress, that it's really a delicate balance. Uh, when you have a problem in a financial and economic world, you better first look at the regulations that created that instead mm -hmm. of creating a new ones. So we, we, we are really, uh, and you see how it's perceived that there is a excessive risk, that but the risk taking is the, the, the core of the innovation, it's the core of the entrepreneurship, it's the core, if the banks are making only secure loans, fully secured with, uh, who is going to, to, to support the small businesses Although that your uh, caller just mentioned? Although that's, that's, very, that's a very strong philosophy in America. In Europe, people are a lot more cautious, and of course, there's the ri there are rifts coming more visible between the U.S. and Europe, basically over the way to move forward, because of the, the risks that the U.S. is I, I don't see it just the Europe uh, or U.S. I would uh, really would like to take a broader view. I would include, even though Asia is so diverse, so diverse, but basically you have emergence of uh, models or at least a perception of the models that are not exactly the Western style capitalism mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they're experimenting with a lot of uh, issues there and we have the forgotten world, the low income economies uh, that also are going to have an impact on all this equation. So basically I don't see it just a uh, dance between Europe and US, it's much broader, it's much more complex and the US uh, uh, as a matter of fact continues to be have a and it in my opinion is going to continue to have a preeminent uh, role in the world economy and that's why the leadership of the United States is crucial. There was an email that came in from a viewer by the name of uh, Moazem Alvi who says it is inevitable that some sit institutions are saved for the better public good. However, it should be done with total vigilance and with a strong condition of accountability. So I, I wonder, do you think anyone is being really held accountable for what's happened up to now? And do you think anyone ever will be? No, uh, simply because it's a systematic failure. And of course, if uh, violations of the law has been uh, 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 committed along the way, they're going to be punished. But what instruments the system has? You s have seen the how the Congress here, uh, consisting of pretty competent people, was overdoing it, trying to enact uh, retroactive legislation or legislation that would target certain group or certain individuals. That is to start with. The last time I checked the books, this is constitutional. But uh, there are limited instruments. And even the wrongdoings are not that easy to be uh, punished, in particular for their wrongdoings of the system. And to suddenly legislate that the people shouldn't be greedy is not realistic. They're going to be yesterday, today, and tomorrow. With 30 seconds to go. Are you, are you optimistic? Uh, definitely. I think that uh, uh, at the end of the day, whatever happens is going to be just how long it's going to take. There's going to be a major readjustment. We're going to see a financial mega market, which is going to empower the players rather than restricting them. We're going to see a new balance of power with the preeminence of the United States, which I believe it's with us for a long run. And uh, we're going to see a new level of prosperity. The point is how long it's going to take and how deep the bottom is going to be. Well, I hope we have a chance to talk about this again. Dr. Mitchell, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. And thank you for being with us. On the next show, Chaz Freeman, who withdrew his acceptance, acceptance of a high-level intelligence position in the Obama administration and openly said the Israel lobby was responsible for halting his appointment. From me and the team, we'll see you next time.